artists. Welcome to our new life with a vibrant artist, Jimena Callado, also known as uh, Hemco. She's a Peruvian artist and illustrator. And uh, today with um, Hemco, we will talk about overcoming creative block and how to find your artistic style. She creates really vibrant uh, artworks and it's a mix uh, of uh, fashion illustrations with so colorful, um, uh, colorful, vibrant mood. And I'm sure it will be very interesting to ask her questions, how she mix this all together. Also, what is, um, how, how it's important to develop your artistic style and as an artist and how to make a business out of that. Also, we will talk about representation and illustration and many, many other things. You're also very welcome to write your questions in the comments and I welcome our guest today to send the request so then I can add you to live. And if you don't want to miss any highlights of this interview, you are really very welcome to subscribe to the newsletter. Then you will receive all the main highlights and tips from the interview, this and also other interviews with other artists and designers into your inbox. And Himiko, I am waiting for your request. I hope uh, you are here. As um, she is from Peru. Lima, so it's really early morning there. <laughs> yeah, I see you just joined uh, the live. Please send the request. There is a button with, yeah, I see it now. Okay, it should, I think in a second it should work. No. Yeah. Uh, hello, good morning. Good morning. <laughs> it's so early for me. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining, especially at 6, 7 a.m. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> How are you? Good. I'm not usually a morning person. I I don't know if you can see it. I have a line across my forehead oh. from my <laughs> sleeping cap from my, from my curls. <laughs> But I'm okay, I'm okay. I already had my coffee, so everything is well. Oh, great. great. Okay, today we will talk about how to overcome creative blogs, how to find your artistic style, how to run a business out of that, and also about re representation in illustration. And we'll start from the beginning of your artistic journey. If you don't mind, please uh, share with us your background, uh, what was the main uh, influence to you and all these things <laughs> sure um, it's a long journey actually <laughs> i think i can start uh, my dad is actually an old school graphic designer which makes me sound like a nipple baby but i swear i'm not <laughs> uh, <laughs> but he was a designer he is a designer and he always had um you know materials around the house like uh, watercolors, acrylic paints, a lot of markers and pens. And he always let me play with them when I was a little kid, like when I was three years old. And I feel like I never stopped playing with art. Uh, so eventually growing up, I was very interested in graphic design and in, in painting and fashion. So I started following like these blogs, this was the blogspot era. And eventually I discovered there was a thing called industrial design. So that's uh, what I studied in college. And eventually I ended up doing the same thing I was doing when I was a little kid, which is basically drawing and doing illustration, drawing little characters. So it was like a very roundabout way to finish at the same point where I started. But I learned a lot in that journey. I studied industrial design and then I worked uh, for some years uh, as a graphic designer. And I always had like side projects and hobbies linked to fashion. I did like street fashion photography. 
and eventually I landed on this artistic style which involves drawing and fashion and uh, drawing like very large people which is very fun to me and yeah and that's the journey I'm on right now. <laughs> I suppose this uh, this experience in graphic design now can help you a lot because I saw many videos there when you designed some stands uh, on the big, um, I don't know, for ex different exposition things and you also apply illustration on different uh, goodies. Yeah. So you definitely, uh, yeah, also, th there's some. Uh, my dad uh, works like um, printing in for different oh. companies so he's not like such a designer right now he's more like uh he works i don't know he helps them make um uh, thousands of boxes and and things for expositions and things so he knows a lot about that world and he so he was always like how are you sending this file for printing it's on RG rgb <laughs> like since i was a little kid so I learned through him a lot about this world of turning, of translating digital art to printed goods. Yeah, that's so nice actually and helpful. Yeah. <laughs> because uh, usually artists uh, who doesn't have this uh, design education sometimes struggle with printing and how to do it better. So you're lucky. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Such experience. And if you talk about your artistic style, it's really very dis distinct and uh, vibrant. Uh, what was, uh, what are the main, uh, what is the core of your artistic style? How did you build it? Uh, and what helped you to discover how much time did, did it take? Yeah, I started uh, drawing in this specific style um, six years ago. Before that, I was doing art. Um, um, a side of my job but for fun and I never thought about having like a distinct style and one day when I was thinking like mm, this photography street style project I'm working on it's not really like taking off and it's not really that fun anymore for me to do it so I was like uh, what if I started drawing fashion so I did a couple of doodles you know in my office when I didn't have anything else to do <laughs> and I um, started thinking about what I saw normally in fashion illustrations which were these very tall and skinny figures and I wondered like what would happen if I tried to do the opposite things the opposite thing and instead of having very elongated figures I made them fat because I also grew up being a fat kid that loved fashion and loved dressing a little bit quirky and I never felt like a fit like a fit in you know in fashion runways you see very slim people in fashion magazines the same and also very white people so I felt like I needed to create like the other side of the coin uh, at least in illustration. So I started drawing these uh, fat <laughs> figures. And I, I don't know, so I could find myself somewhere in the middle. I know my pictures are not realistic, uh, but neither are like the classic fashion illustration uh, figures, which are very, like, I don't know, 10 heads tall and two heads wide. So uh, that's how it started. I just wanted to create like the opposite. Uh, so I could find myself and people like me could find themselves in the middle. When you started to create illustrations in this art in your artistic style, uh, did you find the support uh, were comfortable in this style or what was or were you maybe at the beginning a bit insecure? Can you share your emotions? Yeah. Maybe. Well, it started out as a hobby. I said, what if I created like an Instagram account for this? It just started posting. I uh, wasn't uh, uh, going in with these expectations. I didn't even know if somebody would see them. So it was just like a, a game <laughs> for me. 
and I wasn't like looking for support. I don't know. Uh, like my first, the first people that started following me were like friends and they said, oh, this is cool. I wasn't even like very good looking back <laughs> at my drawings at the time, uh, but it started, grow I started growing with it. I started having fun with it. So I started doing it um, almost daily. So I think that's how I got better and I don't know. I never felt like I received much hate or many people like asking, why are you doing this in this way? Maybe a couple, but I was very secure in my um, like objective. I don't know, like this concept of drawing fashionable people, but being like these big figures. So I don't know. It's, it was fun. <laughs> yeah, that's wonderful. Uh, you also mentioned when we had a little chat before that uh, you would like to talk about uh, overcoming creative blocks and looking at you and your Instagram account and your fabulous artworks. Um, I, uh, it's uh, hard to imagine that you have any art blocks actually because you you look so vibrant and so um, happy, so kind. It, it looks like you create this uh, joyful uh, fashion, fashionable illustration just in seconds, and it's hard to imagine that you have any hard works. But anyway, <laughs> have you uh, met that kind of um, blockaging or before? Or... Well, thank you. <laughs> but <laughs> yeah, I I have had creative art blocks, art blocks, yeah. but. I think it's um, not that common for me anymore after all these years of, I don't know, building myself. And I think I adopted this very healthy practice that I uh, suggest everybody uh, does this, that I always write down my ideas on paper, not on my phone. And it's like I have a backlog of a lot of ideas. Some, not all of them are wonderful, but I feel like I don't um, find myself without any ideas anymore. But because I have this like catalog of infinite ideas that go from what if I started doing hats to I saw this very specific look on the fashion runway of three years ago and I want to draw like my version of this. So I think this is very important, like not letting your ideas go with the wind, trying to capture them in paper, on paper. And oh, I think having a cell helps me a lot because I feel like I already have a starting point. Like, I don't know what I'm gonna draw this week, but I know it's gonna be with my figures that are big and, and colorful and with a lot of texture like it, I already have these factors like checked so I just have to complete what the rest of the project is going to be so as I understand for you works uh, writing down to overcome creative blocks write down any ideas you have just in random time uh, part of the day you just uh, write it down in your notebook and then when you have to create something, you already have a bank of ideas. So you just choose one you like. And, this, and what else uh, can you share with, with us? Uh, what else can help you? Or, in, or maybe in the past, what practices uh, did you use uh, to overcome these art blocks? Yeah, I if think... If you can remember. Any. Yeah, no, I I think when I don't have like very clear what I have to do, especially when it comes to client work, for example, I feel like the inspiration always finds me when I'm researching or already doodling or doing the work uh, without much judgment. Um, I feel like it doesn't help me too much just sitting and wondering what I'm going to do. Just starting to move my hand around paper or around my, my tablet. Um, and I don't know, sometimes like I'm just scribbling something and the shape that comes out, it feels like this perfect solution. And I start like to pull the thread from there. And, 
And no, that, yeah, that sounds wonderful. So the tip is to just to start doodling something and you will catch this inspiration in the process of doodling. Of yeah, or, or researching <laughs> right? something like, I don't know, I feel like stalking your, your theme or I don't know, the brand that asked you for something or your client, I don't know. Like sometimes you find information that can um, strike this inspiration. Uh, if we switch to representation and illustration, uh, why is uh, representation uh, to mind important in the world of illustration and how do you address it in your work? Uh, if you, we, we can go deep in this topic, uh, what would you like to share with others? Yeah, I feel like, like um, in media in general, like uh, when you see, I don't know, movies, photography, magazines, commercials, like everything uh, looks very thin and white and a lot of, I don't know, you see men in position of power. And I feel like as creatives, we have the chance to subvert that and to analyze who we, we are drawing. And maybe we, we, I don't know, sometimes you get a commission or a brand tells you to draw something and you don't need to go to the default uh, white cis people to represent that something. Uh, we, as illustrators, we can get away with drawing anything. So why not draw people that are not usually represented in most media? Uh, me as a brown woman from a uh, country in Latin America, I don't feel often represented in media, not even Peruvian media. Here in Peru, most people look like me, but what we see on TV or people having success in media are very white people. Uh, so I think that that's a disconnect. And I want to see more people that look like me and look like the people from my family and the people I grew up with uh, being represented everywhere. And I'm not a photographer or like a casting director, but uh, I think I can do my part in the world of illustration. And what role uh, does your Peruvian heritage play in your illustration? Well, I think How do you get inspiration from yeah, you? I'm very proud to be Peruvian. I think there's a lot of um, like cultural wealth in Peru, a lot of um, natural, like beautiful things. And I think having that Peruvian pride is necessary. Peru is a complicated country. Uh, there's a lot of like political trouble and problems, but I think showing the good side of Peru helps us feel proud as Peruvians and helps us love like our country and therefore loving each other and not like look only looking out for ourselves as individuals. So I, I know there's some work and very important work that has to do with politics and critiquing what's wrong in society. And I support that 100%, but I also love showing like the positive side of our country and our culture because, because I think it's also important. I, I love Peru and I wish more people loved it because that's good for everybody. Yeah, that's wonderful. And uh, now you are really very successful illustrator and artist, and you have so many uh, amazing collaborations with different brands. Do you remember the beginning of maybe some first clients or some big projects? How did uh, that happen? And how do you find clients now? Yeah, um, well, when starting out, I didn't see like many clients. I started out with commissions, very small commissions, and like, draw my girlfriend in your style. And I w was very happy to do this sort of thing. Mm -hmm. But as I started growing more on social media, I started being noticed by small brands like um, 
I don't know, people who owned like a coffee brand that was very local or people that own like a stationary brand and they, they wanted to me to design their packaging. So I sometimes people think like I I showed up in social media one day and the next day I was contacted by Adidas and that's not how it happened. It's like, it was like a very, like a stare, I don't know. And this, the client started growing in size. And now I, I like this social media presence helps me a lot. And that's how brands find me usually. I do a lot of, not that many, but I, I do posts on TikTok that helps me reach like random people. I also post on LinkedIn, which is weirdly helpful. <laughs> so that's how brands find me. And it's not like the CEO of the brand sometimes is like an assistant or an intern that tells the boss, hey, have you seen this, this work of this artist? And that's how they reach out. So it's like very unexpected. Mm -hmm. Do they reach out to you on Instagram mostly or on TikTok or LinkedIn? I feel like it's a mix. It's, um, sometimes it's first on Instagram and then they stock like my other social media. And it helps a lot to be active on TikTok because uh, brands are interested in being showcased in that platform. They don't, at least in Peru, they don't understand it that well yet. So if I already have like a TikTok community or following, uh, it's attractive to them to, to commission me and then I can make a video and it helps them in that. And uh, you also print your illustrations on different stationery and prints and all these things. And uh, I saw on your website that you sell them. Do you do it by your, by your own or do you uh, maybe have a contract with some print on demand company? How do you organize all this? How do you manage <laughs> these things? Yeah, I did used to partner with uh, like a print on demand company, a uh, local here in Peru. Um, when I was starting out and it helped me because I could like direct people who DMs me and they said, I want to buy your artwork, but I don't have, I don't know enough money to ask for a commission and I could direct them to, to this website. Mm -hmm. But eventually like I, I pulled the block and started printing my own stuff. I started with one product with wash, which was a, a coloring book. It, it was mm -hmm. weirdly successful <laughs> because I think people were expecting, like I dragged it for too long, this having my own products thing. So I, be, I think people were waiting for that thing to drop. And that's how it started out. And I love like seeing my drawings on stuff. I'm also an industrial designer, so I love objects. <laughs> uh, so I'm always thinking about making new products, but I have to sell the ones I have first. <laughs> so that's actually my struggle. <laughs> Where do you store all these uh, things? Uh, do you package and ship them by your own and do you have an assistant? Or no, or... yes, I do it's a lot of time. on my own. <laughs> I pretend um, like an assistant <laughs> when people uh, contact me on like the shop but it's me <laughs> <laughs> so every i don't know every monday you pack and sh uh, and go to the local uh, office uh, post office to ship all their packaging how does it work for you yeah i have a closet with my uh -huh. sock <laughs> i'm looking directly at it i love packaging it like it's very relaxing to me and yeah i go to this post office which is my uh, very close not that close but I go on my bike it's like a, a little break on the week and I sent everything out it's not uh, that crazy right now around like Christmas Christmas time it gets a bit crazy with all the lists and I have to keep track of everything but it's fun 
and I it's not the demand that the demand is so big that I can't handle it myself uh hopefully this changes and eventually I can hire an mm -hmm. assistant but it, for now it's okay I know from many artists and illustrators, designers, that it's hard at the beginning to calculate how much they, what price should they put, because uh, you have to make uh, everything uh, working. Uh, so you uh, produce the product, then you have to, okay, pa packaging maybe not the hardest thing, but anyway, you should uh, calculate the delivery. So, we, and in the in the then you should have some income from that. Yeah. <laughs> and and uh, was it hard for you? How did you figure out that things with uh, delivery, for example, uh, how did uh, you do all of these things? Or maybe you use some platform or can you share with us some behind the scenes of this yeah. part of art business? No, it's definitely a learning curve. I. I started doing like the shipping with a company that eventually closed. <laughs> so I had to change the, this, this shipping company and I had to simplify everything. There's a flat rate uh, for anywhere in the country. Oh, yeah. I know it's more expensive for me to ship to uh, other cities, but it's easier for the client. So I, I don't know, I calculated like an average rate. And even if you're uh, 10 blocks from me and you want shipping, you'll have to pay the full uh, mm -hmm. price. I do have pickup option too, which um, some clients prefer, even if they live far away, because I don't know, they like like going uh, in their own. Um, I don't know, maybe they can't be at their house all day to wait for the the ship, the, the uh, package to arrive so, so it, it do, took some time to figure out yeah and do you ship uh, to Europe or other countries or only in Peru I wish I shipped once to Chile which is next to us <laughs> and yeah. it was extremely complicated and I said no <laughs> like <laughs> I have to figure out another, uh, some way to do it eventually but it's 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 complicated from here <laughs> um also maybe what advice would you take uh, would you give to some artists who want to run their art business and to sell some products with their designs where to start what are the main steps what what to do <laughs> <laughs> well i feel everybody told me this when i was starting out and i didn't believe them but I feel like the easiest thing and that sells very quickly is prints. I started with coloring books and stationery and complicated stuff, but prints is the easiest. So trust me on this one <laughs> and start with prints. And also I feel like going to the art fairs or art markets, I don't know what's the name exactly, but it helps you a lot. Some people like really want to see the products in person and some people may not buy directly from you in that moment, but they'll take your little card and follow you on social and eventually buy from your store, from your website. So that prints and <laughs> go to our <laughs> Yeah. yeah. Is there any difference, big prints, small prints, or it doesn't matter? Well, I make a uh, very like A4, <laughs> like yeah. average prints, which are the easiest to produce, at least for me. So, and people love them. Sometimes people ask me for specific, like big prints, and then I make them custom, but I only offer one size on my website and I haven't got any complaints. <laughs> I sometimes to art fairs bring bigger formats and smaller, but the medium A4 size always sells, sells the most. Yeah, and it's easy to deliver, I yeah. suppose. Yeah. Um. You can deliver <laughs> <Okay. supplements. laughs> So thank you for your tips for starting uh, selling uh, your designs. 
and if we switch to collaborations so uh, when the new client new brand uh, contact you and first you have some uh, emails and negotiations do you usually have calls or how does this process organize if you can share with us that uh, that side of your work it also would be very helpful for many artists just to know how this collaboration works what they should do and also any advice yeah um when when a brand reaches out i feel like the first thing i try to do is try to schedule a very quick call so i can understand what they're looking for exactly and i can ask them directly do you have like a budget <laughs> so they can tell me their their budget first sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't but i try um and i think it's they i think it, they like it they feel like they're being appreciated and people and i'm taking the time to meet with them and listen to them instead of just i don't know sending like my price ranges i've never developed this sometimes people like offer packages or stuff like that i feel like it's very impersonal so i always try to meet with this client and i think they appreciate it so that would be my first step always mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. uh do you also make some sponsorship uh how to say it's sponsored uh, posts on Instagram with uh, different type of materials or something else, right? Yes, um, I do make like only content, uh, which is very unexpected to me because I that was never my goal when I started like growing my social media. My goal was to be looked at by clients and they will commission art. <laughs> I don't know something for their packaging or their stores but sometimes people only want like a video or uh, um, an unboxing and i feel like it's it comes really easy to me i feel like it's it's fun <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so i'm happy to do it mm -hmm. and uh, do they reach out or maybe it's always uh, uh, from this side you never in initiate these uh, collaborations yeah i have never have to... uh reached out and have it work uh, as so <laughs> i feel like the only time that worked was for press i had this interview in creative boom which was very um surprising to me <laughs> but um i don't know i always let the brands reach out to me I feel like reaching me reaching them out for them doesn't work like they need to need me and have it be like this very moment where I think of them and they think of me and we meet mm -hmm. and that, I feel like that doesn't happen <laughs> so they reach okay out. but then I suppose that you work on the consistent uh, content yeah. on posting your Instagram otherwise no brands would uh, reach out for uh, creator who do not uh, make a consistent post on Instagram so can you share with us this side of your work uh, you're an art blogger and uh, how much time do you invest uh, in uh, creating the content how do you work on this is there any system or it's more chaotic just so okay, okay I have inspiration to make this real today and in two weeks or do you have a schedule yeah what I is tried, the process I to have a schedule a schedule many times i've never succeeded <laughs> it's more like uh i don't know inspiration star strikes or there's like a trend that i can turn into something artistic and or that resonates with my work or there's something on the news and i feel like i can talk about this this topic in my illustrations so it's very like this improvisation thing uh, but uh, I sometimes when I'm not posting like for a week or two weeks, I feel like it, like alarm bells go off and I think, no, I have to post. Sometimes it happens because I get busy with work. Also, this year I started teaching. So 
I have a schedule again. So I don't post like, like um, every day, but I try to. <laughs> At you least you mentioned stores. that you, you mentioned that you have a TikTok, and uh, what is your main uh, place to create content? Instagram or TikTok? Do you copy the your reels to TikToks, or otherwise, do you first create something for TikTok, or are these feels are different <laughs> and you don't mix them? It's sometimes. I feel like my Instagram is more um, official. <laughs> this is mm -hmm. my imagination. It's not like a real thing. But I only post like finished work on TikTok or post videos that are very like aesthetically pleasing to me. And TikTok for me is more free. Like sometimes I go on there and post a video that has nothing to do with art and sometimes it's like mm -hmm. an outfit check or me talking about a subject or giving advice. So, but I don't keep them fully separate. Sometimes I do post the same content on my Instagram and, it, and on TikTok. Sometimes like I post um, only the illustration on Instagram and then like the same mm -hmm. illustration, but with a little video or a voiceover on TikTok. If you compare these sponsorship posts, uh, what platform is better for you as an artist? Uh, where brands contact you more often mm -hmm. to make uh, just a content to film a reel or a TikTok? Yeah, I think mostly on Instagram. I think it's more reliable, at least for me. But they are also very excited to know that I have a TikTok sometimes. So sometimes they'll say, yeah, just do one video, but post them on both uh, profiles. So it does help me to have a TikTok as well. But sometimes I feel guilty because TikTok is very random. So sometimes you post something and it gets thousands of views and sometimes it gets a hundred. But in Instagram, I feel like followers do see what I'm doing regardless. <laughs> Thank you so much for sharing so many different parts of your art business and uh, artistic journey. It's really, it was really very interesting to know and helpful. And uh, my last question uh, is what advice would you give to a beginner artist? Or maybe what uh, would you say to yourself in the beginning of your artistic journey? What would you like to know that time? Yeah, I think like the most important things when you're starting out is experimenting a lot and keeping an open mind and try to learn as much as you can. It feels like sometimes people are very determined to follow like a style or I don't know, I don't want to do realistic things or I want to draw like I don't know, anime or only flowers and they forget to learn like the basics of drawing, I don't know, anatomy and color theory. Even if you are gonna do like things that don't look like this classic drawing things, it works to have that in your back pocket. It weirdly works like in a, I don't know, like in a subtle way in the decisions you make when you're creating something. So that's what I say, like, uh, keep learning always and don't try to think, oh, this is not for me, like, because everything you learn can be applied to your work, even if you don't think it directs it do. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you for sharing your experience and for your joyful illustration. I wish you all the best and it's really very inspiring to see your vibrant art. And uh, I hope there will be more projects with your beautiful joyful fashion people <laughs> in all colors <laughs> thank you thank you so much for having me paulina i've been a follower of yours like for years and i love your work you. it was amazing talking to you thank you wish you a wonderful day <laughs> bye bye bye, -bye.